What's up everybody? Remington Begg here from Impulse Creative and today I'm here to share with you how to make sure that your meeting settings are set up the right way in Drift. It's gonna get busy. Drift is working so well, it's booking meetings left and right. But what you wanna make sure that you're doing is that you've got enough time to get up, go to the bathroom, get a drink, get some more coffee so you can keep your meetings rolling. So today what I'm gonna show you is how to set up the right settings so that you know you've got some breathing room between your meetings and Drift can't book you back to back. I'm also going to show you today how you can set other meeting types. So not every meeting needs to be a 60 minute meeting. It can, we can set very different kinds and I'm going to show you how to do that too. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in. So when you get to Drift and you're logged in, in the bottom left you'll see your profile photo. You can go to my settings and settings will bring you to this screen. You can then click my calendar and once you get into my calendar you'll see this screen right here when you click edit up here in the settings you'll see the calendar that it's connected to in this case it's connected to the main calendar um, for our Google account you also see the time zone and you're gonna see availability times so the availability times that are broken up here are set up so that you can um, from 9 to 5 every day on the weekdays if you've got some modified availability or you know for a fact that there are certain times in the day that you need to write proposals or contracts or you know that there are standing meetings, you can add time slots as you go. So you can say on Monday from 9 a.m. to 5, you can then say on Tuesday from 10 a.m. to 6, and you can go through and you can set up your entire week um, like this. By doing that, it allows for you to have some more control and you know when meetings are able to be booked automatically by the bot. The other important stuff is down here under time buffer. So you've got buffer time and what buffer time is, buffer time is basically the amount of time between meetings that you would have. You don't want to go from one meeting right into another without prepping and being prepared. So a lot of times I recommend at least 15 minutes between them, but it up to, it's up to you depending on how your meetings typically go. So you can set 15 minutes. This is gonna make it so there's a, always 15 minutes between meetings that are currently set in your calendar and the ones that the drift bot is going to schedule for you. But then you have the minimum time notice. So depending on how busy you are, um, you know, you can set this up so that it won't, it'll give you more than 15 minutes notice before someone can get a, a slot in your calendar. Um, and you can even set it so that no one can set anything in your calendar today, but they can tomorrow. This depends on your availability. You want to find the balance of being able to plan out your day, but also be very accessible for your prospective customers. So for this example, we're going to say two hours. You want to make sure that you can get to lunch without having to be back. And you know, this would allow for you to make sure that everything is blocked out. It's real easy to not see that this was saved with every change. So there's no save button you have to press. You can go back to my calendar and you're all set. You should have a review of your buffer time, the minimum notice, and your availability slots from a day-by-day -day basis. So that is your calendar settings. For the meeting types, you have the ability, you've got a default drift profile um, schedule, which is set to 60 minutes. Um, you can edit the default by clicking the edit button, and you can rename this. Now know that this is public, this will be public facing. So this could be a um, initial meeting, you can make it a demo meeting, you can make it a, a, a lot of different things. But make sure that it is something that is of value and con context to your uh, prospects. You can also update your location and meeting description information. We use Zoom over here at Impulse Creative. So you can, what you can do is you can go into Zoom and you can set up your personal meeting room. You can copy that information and you can literally paste that information right into the description box. This way you won't have to create a meeting link every single time. And then you can take that URL, you can, you can drop that URL in the location right up top. So now you've got all the contact information for that Zoom meeting, you've got your initial meeting here, and you can click save and finish. So now this is set up and you know that if this meeting is booked, there's nothing you have to do except show up. You can then create the new meeting type. 
So a new meeting type might be that you have a 15 minute you know, session where people can ask you frequently asked questions, or it could be that this is an initial qualification call. It could be a lot of different things, but it's up to you and what you call it. But the same thing goes here. You can choose your meeting duration and you have anywhere from a 10 minute meeting up to a 60 minute meeting. For this sake, we're gonna say 15 minutes and we're gonna call this a, a initial onboarding meeting. So when we choose initial onboarding meeting, then we can just do a simple link here. So initial onboarding. You can drop in that same Zoom meeting link information and you can also put some further description in what the meeting's context is about. And then just remember that when the prospect fills out the meeting request, it'll actually ask them it, what they want you to know for the meeting and that information will be dropped in as well. So once you get your meeting and description instructions set up, you can just go ahead and press save and finish. And then you'll see that you have two different meetings here. Um, you've got your initial meeting, which is the default, and you have an onboarding meeting um, where you can see the actual link here. So if we were to click this initial onboarding meeting, that's going to take you to the same chatbot screen and you will see it pop up off to the right, right here. So once you have that all set up, um, you can create as many meeting types as you want. You can also edit the meetings at any point in time. And of course you can delete them. Um, and it's great if you share these links with your other staff or people that are helping you book meetings. Awesome. Well, that was a tutorial for how to set up and customize your calendar settings in Drift. If you have any other questions or things that you would like answered about how to use Drift and how to get the most out of the tool, be happy to help you out. Simply shoot me a message. You can hit me up at, at RemingtonBeg on Twitter and comment in this video. I'd be more than happy to have a conversation. And if you can, if you want to subscribe, you can go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Um, there should be a link right over here. And you can also um, see other tutorial videos that we've created on Drift. And if there's anything else you want, just let us know. Thanks so much and have a great day.